Welcome once again physics people to another tutorial video. In today's video we'll be looking at motion, uh, focusing on position time graphs and really just looking at the fundamental skills of how we can interpret and analyze a position time graph. So our first scenario, let's consider the following motion description. So we have to the left hand side a vehicle with a scale and this is measuring position in meters north of our reference starting point. So stage one, the car travels 20 meters north for five seconds at a constant speed. So off goes our car and that will take five seconds. And here's the first section or the first stage of our graph. So you can see we started at a position of zero and over a five second period or interval, we've traveled 20 meters. Stage number two, the car remains stationary for five seconds. So for the next five seconds, the vehicle stays in the same position at 20 meters north of our initial starting position. So this is represented by a flat section showing there's no movement at all for the next five seconds from five till 10. Stage three, the car travels 40 meters south for 10 seconds at a constant speed. So there goes our car backwards 40 meters. And that's represented on the graph here. So we started at a position of 20 meters north of our initial starting position at 10 seconds. And now for a further 10 seconds, we've traveled at a constant rate to a position now 20 meters south of our initial starting position. Stage four, the car remains stationary for five seconds. And so we have this flat section for five seconds. So there's our first scenario. Let's try and analyze this by filling in the following table. So first of all, from zero to five seconds, and we've got that highlighted green here on the graph, there's a distance of 20 meters traveled by the vehicle in the first five seconds. The change in time is from zero to five, so that's five seconds. We want to work out the average speed. Here's a nice little triangle that allows us to work out speed from distance and time. We cover the speed, what we want to calculate, and we end up with speed equals distance over time. Another way of looking at this is at our graph. The gradient or the slope represents the speed in meters per second. So the average speed of this green section is equal to the rise over the run, where we've risen a distance of 20 meters and we've run a time of five seconds. So 20 divided by five, which is our distance over our time or our rise over our run, gives us an average speed of four meters per second. The position of the vehicle in the first five seconds of motion is heading in the northerly direction. It's going upwards. So we're traveling north. And we can describe that as a constant speed. Okay, so for the first five seconds, we've traveled 20 meters. It's taken us five seconds to travel that distance. So on average, there are four meters every second being traveled. It's in the northerly direction and it's a constant speed, meaning the gradient is a constant value. From five to 10, this flat section at the top of the graph. We've started at 20 meters at the five second mark and we're still there after 10 seconds. So we've traveled no distance. It's taken us five seconds. If I look again at my distance divided by time, that gives me a speed of zero divided by five. It has a gradient of zero, it is flat, so there is no speed whatsoever. So in that sense, we don't worry about a direction being north or south, and we can describe this object as being stationary. From 10 to 20, we now highlight that section green. The object has traveled 20 meters from the starting point north back to zero and a further 20 meters south. So in total, we've traveled 40 meters. It's taken us 10 seconds, from the 10 second mark all the way down to the 20 second mark. So the difference between those two is 10. Again, to work out the speed, it's distance divided by time. So 40 divided by 10 gives us four meters per second. Except this time, it's going downwards. This is in the southerly direction. We notice the y-axis is labeled position in meters in a northerly direction. So when we're heading downwards on our graph, we're traveling in a southerly direction. So again, constant gradient represents constant speed. Finally, between 20 and 25 seconds down the bottom. We travel zero meters, takes five seconds. The average speed is distance over time, zero divided by five is zero, no direction needed, and the object is described as being stationary. Let's consider the distance travel for the entire journey. So first of all, from zero to five, we travel 20 meters, as shown by a green line on the graph. We then travel zero meters from five to 10. We then travel 40 meters between 10 and 20 seconds. Finally, we travel zero meters between 20 and 25 seconds. Adding those together, we have a total value of 60, and of course, that's being measured in meters. Displacement. Displacement is calculated by taking the initial position 
from the final position. So our initial was that reference of zero and our final is minus 20 or 20 meters in the southerly direction. We sub those values in. We find that our displacement, our object has ended up being minus 20 meters north from the starting position, which can be written as 20 meters south. So 20 meters southerly is our displacement. Scenario number two, let's consider the following motion description. Stage one, car travels 20 meters south for five seconds at a constant speed. Notice we're using a different scale in this scenario. Go up to a maximum of 40 meters north, and down the bottom a negative maximum of 40 meters south. So for the first five seconds at a constant speed, we travel from position of zero, and after five seconds we have a position of 20 meters in the southerly direction. The car remains stationary for five seconds, so there we have a nice flat line between five and 10. Stage three, the car travels 40 meters north for five seconds at a constant speed. Up it goes, 40 meters north, and that's represented on our graph starting at 10 at a position of minus 20 north, all the way up to 20 meters north, which gives me a total increase of 40 meters between 10 and 15, 40 meters north for five seconds at a constant speed. The car remains stationary for five seconds, flat line, and finally the car travels 20 meters south for five seconds at a constant speed. That gets us back to our starting point, and there's our graph. Let's now analyze this second graph. So let's complete the table from zero to five, from the zero to five second mark, we have our green line here. We see the distance traveled is 20 meters. It's taken us five seconds. The average speed is distance over time, which is four. So 20 divided by five gives me four meters per second on average. The direction is heading down the graph. Up was north, down will be south. And the description is it is a constant speed. And that's because it's a nice flat line, a straight constant gradient. From five to 10, we have zero distance being traveled. It's stationary. It's taken us five seconds, zero divided by five gives me an average speed of zero meters per second. No direction is needed because it's not moving and the object is classified or described as stationary. From 10 to 15, we have a distance traveled of 40 meters. We started at minus 20 in the northerly direction. We end up with positive 20 in the northerly direction, a change of 40 meters. Now that takes us five seconds from the time of 10 across to a time of 15. 40 divided by five, is how I work out my speed distance over time, eight meters per second on average. So the average speed is eight meters per second. This green line is heading up, it's rising. So it's going to have a direction of north because the vertical axis positive direction is north. And of course the description is it's a constant speed because the gradient is constant along this green section. Between 15 and 20 seconds, we have a flat line. So distance is zero. Time is five seconds. The average speed is distance over time. That gives me a average speed of zero meters per second. The direction is irrelevant when the speed is zero and the object can be described as stationary. And finally, from 20 to 25, we travel 20 meters. We start 20 meters north of the starting location. And at the end of our five second duration, we're back down to a reference point of zero where we started from. So our distance is 20 meters. Our duration of time is five seconds. And to work out our speed, that is distance over time, 20 divided by five is four meters per second. And that is heading in a southerly direction as the gradient is downwards. And of course, it's a nice flat line. It has a constant gradient. Therefore, we can describe this as having a constant speed. Let's now calculate the total distance to this journey. So from zero to five, we travel 20 meters as seen in our green section. And that's simply read off the Y axis. We then travel zero meters. We then in the next section from 10 to 15, from 10 to 15, we travel 40 meters, we travel a further zero meters, and then finally from 20 to 25, we travel back a further 20 meters. That gives me a total distance of 80, and of course, the units are meters because our y axis is measured in meters. Now, displacement is looking at our final and initial positions. Our final position is that time of 25, our initial position is time of zero. You can see that both these finals and initial have a position of zero, effectively starting and finishing at our reference point. So this object has, despite all its motion, ended up where it started 25 seconds later. So it has a displacement of zero meters and the directions are relevant. Now, it's your turn. I suggest you pause this video and have a go at the following examples. A sample question. Consider the following motion graph. 
Question one, what's the total distance traveled? Let's have a look. We've got 100 in the first 10 seconds. Travels 100. Travels a further 200 between 10 and 30 seconds. Then it travels zero between 30 and 40. And finally, it travels another 100 meters between 40 and 50, giving us a total of 400 meters. So the total distance traveled from this position time graph is 400 meters. Question number two, what's the total displacement? So displacement is comparing your final position from your initial position. So the final position at a time of 50 gives me a position of zero. And my initial at a time of zero also has a position of zero. So this particular graph has zero displacement. Question three, at what time did the object start traveling in a southerly direction? We said before the gradient can be looked at in terms of measuring the speed. Positive gradients here are representing a northerly direction. So logically, negative gradients represent a southerly direction. So where is our first negative gradient starting? Here it is. At a time of 10 seconds is where our gradient starts to become negative. So at what time did the object start traveling in a southerly direction? The answer is 10 seconds where we have the commencement of a negative gradient. Question four, when was the object traveling in a northerly direction? Now a northerly direction represents a positive gradient. So we have a positive gradient between zero and 10, and we also have another positive gradient between 40 and 50. So when was the object traveling in a northerly direction? Between zero and 10 seconds and between 40 and 50 seconds, both of which are identifiable by the positive gradient. And the fact that the Y axis indicates positive values are north. Question five, when was the object stationary? Stationary represents a speed of zero. Speed is represented by gradient. So where on this graph is there a gradient of zero? That's right, between the 30 and 40 second mark, we have a zero gradient representing a stationary object. Question six, what was the object's average speed for the first 10 seconds? Average speed equals distance over time. This can also be represented by the gradient rise over run. So the distance here in the first 10 seconds, we've started at zero and we've risen 100. In terms of time, we've started at zero and we've run across 10 seconds. So our distance was 100 meters for the first 10 seconds and our time is 10 seconds. 100 divided by 10 gives me an average speed of 10 meters per second for the first 10 seconds of motion. You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.